Even though 2016 was an epic year for movies, it almost feels like a warm-up when you look at the long list of blockbuster films already on the release calendar for 2017. It's never too early to get excited about taking a trip to the theatre, so we've lined up the biggest upcoming releases, and whether you're into action, comedy, horror, or drama, there's something here for everyone. Resident Evil, the final chapter. Five years after Resident Evil Retribution, Mila Jovovich returns to close out the sci-fi horror franchise she's led for more than a decade. With nearly one billion in worldwide grosses, despite the long lapse between sequels, the sixth installment will reportedly pick up where Retribution left off, while following director Paul W.S. Anderson's mandate to come full circle with the saga of a dystopian future in which a corporate Operation created virus has unleashed a zombie plague. John Wick, Chapter 2. After everything he went through in the first movie, what could possibly convince John Wick to come out of retirement? Dog lovers will be relieved to hear it isn't the death of another pooch that gets his guns blazing in John Wick, Chapter 2. This time, one of John's old buddies is in the middle of a scheme to topple an assassin's guild and he needs backup. The Lego Batman movie. Not long ago, the idea of a movie based on Legos seemed too silly for words. But then the Lego movie racked up nearly $470 million while making us all root for plastic bricks and play Everything is Awesome on endless repeat. Oh my gosh, I love this song! Everything is awesome. Taking the hint, Warner Brothers is diving right in with a universe of Lego-derived films, starting with this spin-off, which brings back Will Arnett as Gotham's caped crusader. The Great Wall Zhang Yimou's sprawling historical fantasy epic The Great Wall has an intriguing, albeit a little ridiculous, idea. The Great Wall of China was built to keep out more than just unwanted human neighbours. From everything we've seen so far, The Great Wall will at least be a spectacular showcase of effects-heavy cinematography. Logan Hugh Jackman has played Wolverine for so long that it's nearly impossible to imagine anyone else in the role. Soon, 20th Century Fox will need to figure out who will be the next actor to play the part. But first, Jackman's getting his swan song with a third standalone Wolverine feature. The film's plot draws from Marvel's Old Man Logan comic books about an alternate future version of the nearly ageless hero. The film will also feature the return of Patrick Stewart's Professor X, adding yet another layer of closure for longtime fans of the franchise. Kong, Skull Island. On March 10, 2017, the big gorilla returns with Kong, Skull Island. This 70s set trip into the Kong mythos gives viewers the biggest version of the character they've ever seen, which is a good thing for Kong. Because after Skull Island finishes its theatrical run, the studio is planning to pit him against Godzilla in a monster mashup for the ages. What could possibly go wrong? Beauty and the Beast Like Disney's earlier Beauty, this version draws inspiration from the classic fairy tale about a prince, played here by Dan Stevens, who's cursed with a grotesque appearance. Yet he finds love with a pure-hearted maiden, played by Emma Watson, who's imprisoned in his castle after her father offers her up in a deal to spare his own life. Like a lot of stories from the era, it's pretty dark. But Disney's animated adaptation put a family-friendly spin on it with music and humour, and we can expect the same here. Plus, a cast that includes Ewan McGregor and Sir Ian McKellen. Power Rangers the forthcoming Power Rangers isn't the first movie to capitalize on the mighty Morphin 90s craze, of course. 
However, director Dean Israelite's take on the story offers a much more serious and emotionally charged account of how these misfit teens managed to become a band of unlikely world saviors, battling back the forces of evil. If the film does manage to renew even a little bit of the Power Rangers frenzy that the series enjoyed in the 90s, it's going to be massive. Ghost in the Shell Rupert Sanders' adaptation of the popular Ghost in the Shell manga series of the same name is expected to be a visual spectacular that chronicles an epic chase between a cyborg policewoman and a dangerous hacker. It promises to offer the same kind of gnarly effects and existential futurism that captivated audiences in films like The Matrix. Scarlett Johansson's own turn in Lucy and The Fifth Element, sign us up. The Fate of the Furious According to the official synopsis, the new sequel in this long-running franchise titled The Fate of the Furious finds Vin Diesel's Dom lured back into the world of crime he can't seem to escape and a betrayal of those closest to him by a mysterious woman played by the always amazing Charlize Theron. Listen carefully and under the roar of the motors, you can hear the box of his cash registers ringing. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. Initially, it seemed like a hilariously dumb idea for Marvel to turn a relatively obscure comic about a ragtag team of intergalactic do-gooders whose ranks included a raccoon-like creature and an alien resembling a sentient tree into a $200 million movie. Nearly $775 million in box office receipts later, The Guardians of the Galaxy could be the start of an Avengers-style franchise for the studio. While we don't have many details regarding what they'll be up to this time around, it's pretty much a given that it'll be tons of fun. Nobody has any tape! Not a single person has tape! You have an atomic bomb in your bag! If anybody's gonna have tape, it's you! I have to do everything! You are wasting a lot of time! <laughs> Alien Covenant Fans who feel Prometheus didn't tie into the Alien film strongly enough might be better served by Alien Covenant, which brings back Michael Fassbender and Numi Rapace to show what happens after they hijack an ancient spacecraft in order to venture to the homeworld of the mysterious engineers and halt their plans for humanity. Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales Pre-production on the fifth installment in the Pirates of the Caribbean saga started back when the previous sequel, 2011's On Stranger Tides, was on its way to theaters, and its path through development has been strewn with script difficulties and budget-induced delays. Still, any new chapter in a franchise that's grossed nearly $4 billion counts as a promising development for the studio, and Disney has stood by while producer Jerry Bruckheimer steered Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales to its destination. Wonder Woman After being introduced to audiences in Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice, Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman will get her own standalone feature, which is rumored to be the first installment in a period piece trilogy that will take audiences from the 1920s to the present day. Whatever actually happens in the movie, it's a long overdue victory for comics fans who've waited years for the Amazonian warrior to get a shot at her own big screen franchise. World War Z 2 the first World War Z turned out to be surprisingly entertaining, as well as extremely commercially successful. That brings us to the inevitable sequel, World War Z 2, in which Brad Pitt returns to battle the zombie plague. We don't know much about the plot at this point, but director Juan Antonio Bayona will be working from a screenplay by Stephen Knight, whose varied list of credits includes the chess drama Horn Sacrifice and Bradley Cooper's Burnt. Cars 3 
Rev up your engines, kids, because Lightning McQueen is back in high-speed action in Disney Pixar's Cars 3, the 3D animated adventure which follows the events of 2006's Cars and 2011's Cars 2, will follow McQueen on his journey to catch up with a new generation of speedsters and feature the return of some fan favorites like Mata, Sally Carrera, and Ramon. Transformers The Last Night Aside from Mark Wahlberg being back as the saga's current human star, The Last Night looks like it will plunge viewers into a time-traveling plot that includes King Arthur and an alternate history in which Nazis won World War II, plus plenty of action and lots of lead-ins to the assortment of spin-off films the studio's planning. Despicable Me 3 Despicable Me has grown into an impressively adaptable franchise for Universal. Details are still very sketchy regarding this third installment, but we can safely assume Steve Carell will be back as the nefarious but kinda cuddly Gru. And we know he'll be working from a script written by Cinco Paul and Ken Dario, who collaborated on the first two films. Spider-Man Homecoming this new Spidey reboot finds Tom Holland starring as the web slinger in a standalone film after wowing audiences with his debut in Marvel's Captain America Civil War. John Watts, who helmed the creepy, low-budget Kevin Bacon thriller Cop Car, is on board as director for a storyline that features Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark playing mentor to young Spider-Man in his battle against the Vulture, played by the Birdman himself, Michael Keaton. War for the Planet of the Apes Dawn of the Planet of the Apes director Matt Reeves returns for his follow-up, which picks up from Dawn's final scene, a grim foreshadowing of the major conflict brewing between genetically enhanced primates and a human population decimated by the simian flu virus. Reeves, who co-wrote the script, is keeping storyline details under wraps but says the events depicted in War for the Planet of the Apes see Caesar achieving mythic status. That can only mean one thing. Catchy songs. Yes, you finally made a monkey out of me. Dunkirk. After a decade spent in the sci-fi fantasy realm, writer-director Christopher Nolan has put his considerable talents to work on a historical drama about a World War II battle. Dunkirk reunites Nolan with a pair of his Dark Knight and Inception stars, Tom Hardy and Killian Murphy, and early footage harkens back to the heart-pounding beachfront battle imagery in the legendary opening scene from Saving Private Ryan. Nolan's attention to detail on the partial IMAX production, including shooting on the site of the real-life events that inspired it, will no doubt serve his tale of heroism and survival well. The Dark Tower Of all the adaptations Stephen King's written works have produced, The Dark Tower has to be the most anticipated. The sci-fi western horror film will follow the events of King's prolific Dark Tower book series, presenting the apocalyptic adventure of an 11-year-old boy named Jake Chambers as he accidentally uncovers the Midworld dimension and joins up with Roland Duchesne, played by Idris Elba. The two set off to find the Dark Tower before the Man in Black, played by Matthew McConaughey, can stop Roland from saving his dimension from certain destruction. Stephen King's fans are sure to turn up for this long overdue Hollywood treatment of the beloved series. It. The 1991 TV miniseries adaptation of Stephen King's It amassed a cult following, and Tim Curry's original performance as the town terrorizing clown Pennywise has set a high bar for anyone to follow in the role. So when director Andy Muschietti revealed his new version of the character, now played by Bill Skarsgård, in a costume that could have easily been borrowed from a schoolgirl's dress-up chest, it's only natural that he faced a little blowback. There's still reason to believe this thing will be a hit though. There's tons of talent on board, including Skarsgård and Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things. And there were plenty of scenes from the book that were glossed over in the first adaptation. 
Blade Runner 2049. Blade Runner 2049 director Denis Villeneuve has a few big things going for him. Most importantly, the presence of original Blade Runner director Ridley Scott, who's producing and star Harrison Ford reprising his role as Rick Deckard. Ford's joined by an ensemble rounded out by Ryan Gosling, Robin Wright and Jared Leto, all working from a script co-written from Blade Runner writer Hampton Fancher with Michael Green. Story details are a mystery, and whether the end result can stand up alongside the original obviously remains to be seen, but all the ingredients are here for a hell of a movie. Just keep Deckard away from the fridge. Kingsman The Golden Circle the plot details are still a little loose. Rumor has it the Kingsman British spy team will team up with their American equivalents after their headquarters are destroyed by a lethal foe. But who needs a synopsis when you've got a cast this intriguingly weird? Returning stars Taron Egerton, Mark Strong, and Sophie Cookson are joined by an eclectic ensemble that includes Channing Tatum, Halle Berry, Julianne Moore, Jeff Bridges and Elton John? Whatever happens in the Golden Circle, we're betting it won't be dull. Friday the 13th Reboot Between 1980 and 1989, the hockey masked slasher Jason Voorhees hacked his way through scores of screaming victims in eight films. Although by the end of the decade, the franchise had started to teeter between stale and ridiculous. This latest overhaul arrives nearly a decade after the last reboot, which grossed nearly a hundred million. Chances seem good it has to do with a guy in a hockey mask chopping kids to bits. Mark, you want to see my new chainsaw hockey mask? Ah! Oh. Sorry, what am I thinking? Saw Legacy Composer Charlie Clauser told The Hollywood Reporter that the eighth installment of the Saw franchise will be a reinvention of the series, offering a fresh take on the material that will establish a new storyline and new characters that can carry the saga into the future. Expect lots of blood, gore, and puppets involved in absolutely disgusting and terrifying acts. Mm. My tongue out. Oh. Hey, Dan! Thor Ragnarok. In Norse mythology, Ragnarok is basically the end of the world and the death of the gods. So it goes without saying that, based on the title, Thor Ragnarok won't be a jolly good time for our hammer-wielding hero, although we can guess from his imminent participation in the upcoming Avengers Infinity War movies that he'll emerge relatively unscathed after the final act, Justice League. Director Zack Snyder is hard at work on his third film in the DC Extended Universe, the superhero team-up film Justice League. The comic book throwdown ought to reunite Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman while also giving formal introductions to Aquaman, Cyborg and the movie version of The Flash. While we don't yet have any idea what danger our team will face, we do know it'll be pretty serious. Star Wars Episode 8 This is Star Wars we're talking about. So the list of things we truly know about Episode 8 is awfully short. Pretty much all we can tell you is that this installment follows the events of Episode 7 and advances the new trilogy pitting the Resistance against the First Order led by Supreme Leader Snoke and his apprentice Kylo Ren. Oh, and another thing, it'll probably sell a couple of tickets. We're home. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this other cool stuff we know you'll love.